Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. My kids bought me new pajamas. I don't know if you guys can see them, but they're cute. They're like satiny, which makes my hair really static. Gee. But they're cute and they're comfortable, so I love them. Uh, birthday was good. You know... I think 40 was the first birthday I wasn't like actually not looking forward to. Uh, but it was good. And we had a nice time. And it was low key and it was perfect. Because we did Vegas. Me and the Bells did Vegas up. Um, so this worked out perfectly. Um, Michael bought me something from Victoria's Secret. P.S. We've been together. 117 years. He's never done that. Ever. I said, is that your way of saying I need to put on something sexy? He was like, no, I just think it was my way of saying at 40, I think you look the sexiest. I was like, nice save, Sullivan, up top. <laughs> what do you think, buddy? What do you think? This dog, this dog, this dog. Um, so it was a great night. It really was a great night. Um, what else is going on? We have soccer this morning, and then we are driving as a family. All right, buddy. Okay, buddy. No, no, no. Come on. Don't push me. We are driving to Dothan, Alabama, where I've never been to Dothan. Um, and we are going to spend the night there um, because Ruben is performing tomorrow at the Dothan Opera House at 3 o'clock, so I'm taking the kids to see him. If anybody lives in Dothan and wants to come see us, come to the Dothan Opera House tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Um, if you have books, I'll sign them. Um, anyway, um, I want to talk about the, the most amazing thing about a woman. Okay, there's so many. Let's be honest. <laughs> we really are incredible. One of the amazing things about women. There is a period of time when you hurt a woman, where she is still capable of going back. Not that she should. That's not what I said. But is still capable. It is a small window. To her, it feels humongous. While she's stuck in that emotional purgatory, she feels like she is going to be stuck there forever. She thinks about you. She dreams about you. She cries over you. She can't eat over you. She drinks more over you. She is distracted because of you. She is quick with other to anger at others because of you. She uh, feels listless and distracted. She aches inside and misses you. She is in a vulnerable place where she will forgive things she should not forgive. She wants to love. Her instincts, her female instincts to love and nurture are screaming from, at her from inside to get to you, to love you more, to care for you harder, to convince you that she is the one to take care of you and she has to suppress her instincts because whatever has happened has separated you and she is tormented by the separation and then one day when she least expects it she wakes up and you are not the first thing on her mind she eats something, notices the sunshine. Her favorite song comes on the radio. She sings along. She gets things done at work. Maybe goes to lunch. Comes home and thinks about having a drink after work and decides she doesn't need it. And the next day she gets up and doesn't think about you until noon. And when she does, she feels a twinge 
but she pushes it away and keeps going because there are things she needs to get done and girls she needs to meet uh, and fun she needs to have. And the sun shines brighter and the food tastes better and the music is better. And then one day she wakes up and doesn't think about you at all. And then one day she wakes up and thinks about you and smiles and hopes you're doing well. And your name comes up in conversation and she genuinely says, how's he doing? She bumps into you somewhere and doesn't hide behind a dumpster. She says, hey, how are you? How are things going? Um, she walks away from you and thinks about the fact that you ever touched her body and she shivers a little bit and wonders if she can take her sex back. Realizing that she can't, she giggles to herself a little bit and thinks, oof, I went through it with that one, didn't I? And then she kind of laughs at how much she loved you and how hard it was to get over it all because she sees you now for what you are and realizes that was never going to work because you like hiking and wetsuits and she likes cosmos and high heels and well, that just doesn't make for a good, you know, whatever. Um, you also lie and have a fondness for her friends when she's not around. She doesn't like that. Um, I share this with you because emotional purgatory is the scariest place for a woman, but the most brilliant thing about women is we go through it, man. I mean, we go through it because... Our instincts, the way we are chemically created, is to love and nurture. Primarily because we have to attract men who can give us their seed so we can grow humans, bring them into the world, and then love and nurture them. This is like going back to caveman and biblical stuff, right? It is our natural chemical makeup to love and nurture. So when we cannot love and we cannot nurture, we feel like we are failing. But it's like me trying sometimes, not always. It's like me trying to nurture this jackhole coaster. Can't do it. Um, and eventually evolution or I don't know, grace, I don't know what kicks in. Um, and our body resets. Our body goes, yeah, you, oh, oh, stop, stop, stop. Stop with the crying and all that stuff. This was the wrong one. You can't, you can't do it. We got to keep, we got to keep it moving because the, the world will stop turning if women stop loving and nurturing. So you, oops, sorry, wrong one. Stop crying over here. Keep it moving. Go find someone else to love and nurture. And we do. And the beautiful thing is when a woman is done, she is done. And it is the most glorious thing in the world. And if you're lucky, you will have not hurt her so bad that she will smile one day when she thinks about you and hopes that you are doing well. Um, I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, all right. I love you guys so much today. Have a great day.